candy bar Shanae, and this is episode two of Hunted Hometown Horror Stories here on our channel. In today's episode, we will be talking about one of the most haunted places in the city of Chattanooga called the Reed House Hotel. Now, yet again, as, as I told you in our previous video, when I told you the intro of what this series will be about, this particular horror story takes place right before the Civil War in the city of Chattanooga. Back in the 1800s, so we're going to give a little bit of history about the Reed House Hotel and why it's so haunted to this very day. Now, the original name of the hotel is actually called the Old Crutchfield House, which was founded by the Crutchfields and located on 827 Broad Street in Chattanooga, Tennessee. However, in the mid-1800s, the Crutchfields, which included their father and two sons, Thomas and William, decided to build across the street from where the new railroad was going to be built during the Civil War. So around 1847, it was decided that a train station would be built in Chattanooga, Tennessee. So that the Crutchfields decided they were going to go ahead and just try to get in on that to build them a hotel to get in on that money because of all the traffic that was going to take place there. So between 1854 and 1857, Nashville, Chattanooga, and Memphis slowly started creating different branches to allow a railroad system to be built between them and Chattanooga ended up being called the River City. So although business was uh, going well for the Crutchfields during this time, things got a little bit hectic when the Civil War started to really, really, really pop off. So when the Civil War started to pick up steam, there was a Confederacy recruit that had recently stepped down from the Senate named Jeffrey Davis. While he was on his way to Mississippi, he decided to spend the night at the old Crutchfield house. However, one night um, over drinks during dinner, he started to pop off about how he thought that the southern states were doing better than the Union during the war. And they ruffled some feathers the wrong way. So Jeffrey Davis just kept going on and on and on. Mind you, he's a Confederacy recruit. So he's just bragging about their feats and saying, you know, they're going to get the Union. You know, they don't have a chance. And this ruffled the feathers of the Crutchfield brothers. More so William than Thomas because William was a part of the Union. He was a Union supporter. So when William heard him talking all this smack, he stood up and he was like, hey, yo, you know, you're a traitor. And when he told Davis that he was a traitor, Davis got really offended and he eventually challenged him to a duel. Now, if it wasn't for the brother Thomas, we don't know, maybe Jeffrey Davis or his brother William could have gotten killed, but they ultimately didn't end up fighting at all. However, with all the political talk that was going on, William and Thomas got into it, then them and their daddy got into it, and it just became a big thing, a whole big thing. So while they're fighting against themselves, tensions seem to brew. Now, William was actually a big Union supporter. He was reported to be an honorary captain for the Chickamauga campaign, as well as one of their siege of Chattanooga. There's also an alleged relative that chronicled like a family tell-all book telling everybody's business. And in that book, they said about William's time fighting in the war against the South. There's some excerpts in that book shortly after his first battle that say he fell ill for a whole week. There's also another excerpt that says that shortly after William found out that his wife was actually a supporter of the Confederacy, knowing that he was a supporter of the Union, that, you know, he mysteriously ended up getting sick. He was drugged, making it where he couldn't fight anymore. Oh, but the story actually gets a little bit worse from there because, see, 
after the fight between Jeffrey Davis and his brother, between the fight between Jeffrey Davis and his brother, William, they ended up having a lot of problems that they couldn't bounce back from. So they ultimately decided that they were just going to go ahead and sell. However, the new hotel owners were having financial difficulties and they couldn't keep the hotel up. There was a lot of pressures going on during the Civil War. So around 1863, the hotel actually became more like a makeshift hotel for the Union soldiers. It served as one of the main places that Union soldiers could be stationed to get help and receive medical attention as well. Some say that this particular time in history is why the hotel remains so very much haunted today. Keep that in mind as we go on with this story. Oddly enough, unfortunately in 1867, the hotel burnt to the ground and the owners just had enough at that point. They decided that they were not going to rebuild. So they too eventually chose to sell. So in 1871, the city of Chattanooga was starting to rebound and recover from the pressures and all of the devastation of the Civil War. Now, around this time, there was a man named Dr. John Reed and his son, Samuel Reed, came into the city and they decided that they were actually going to take the remnants and the ramblings left of the old Crutchfield House Hotel and rebuild their own hotel. They were going to call it the Reed House Hotel. They decided they're going to salvage whatever was left of that hotel and make it the pinnacle of prestige and luxury in that city. So the new hotel actually opened up in 1872 on New Year's Day. It was the talk of the town. Everybody was in awe of the large mirrors and the arch ceilings, the marble floors and the walnut wood paneling throughout the lobby. Everybody said it was a sight to see. It was a really big deal. However, as misfortune always seems to have it with this place, around March the 2nd of 1875, Things went sour once again with this location per usual. It seems that the Reed House was a victim of a very massive flood that swept downtown Chattanooga. Reports say that the water was at least two feet deep at the post office and at least four feet throughout Market Street. However, by 1926, the hotel was in really bad shape in a desperate need of repairs and renovations. The architect firm decided that they were just going to knock it all down and start from scratch. Their goal was to make it 10 floors high and to make it reminiscent of the hotel's heyday. However, that was never fully obtained. They were able to keep some remnants of the silver ballroom, which is really famous there. But there was a lot of shortcuts and questionable construction that happened. But nevertheless, it was still built with some of the original characteristics that it once had. However... Per usual, with all the turmoil that took place over this location over the years, people have reported some really mysterious occurrences. Hotel guests reported hearing strange noises in the middle of the night, feeling cold, stiff breezes, seeing shadowy figures in a room. One guest even said they heard the toilet flush by itself when nobody else was in the room. One of the most common reports of supernatural activity, however, is the claims of seeing ghost soldiers. Now, these are believed to be the same Union soldiers that died in that hospital back when the hotel was a makeshift hospital during the Civil War for Union soldiers. Still, the most terrifying events and hauntings are known to take place in none other than the room of 311. Back in 2004, the Tennessean made reports that guests were saying that they were feeling and seeing an unwanted presence in the Reed House's room 311. They were making complaints of paranormal activity, stating that they could not sleep in the room because they always felt like there was a presence with them. An unfamiliar presence that is now known to be Annalisa Netherly that haunts room 311. However, there are two conflicting stories that take place that say why and how Annalisa actually died in that room and why she still haunts it to present day 2020. The first story says that around 1920, that she was a prostitute and she took her latest John to that room, which is one of her favorites, to spend time together. However, some others say that the man was actually her husband. Either way it goes, she was with the man in that room and things didn't go well. Because eventually, either her husband or just her John started seeing her parade around the hotel with a different man and it really rubbed them the wrong way. 
and it sparked a jealousy in them that nobody saw coming. So when he seen her with the next dude, he got really salty and he decided to take matters into his own hands. Legend has it that he eventually killed Annalisa in a jealous rage. They say he killed her, almost decapitated her completely and left her body in a bathtub, which is where the staff found her and reported the murder eventually. The report said that she was practically beheaded and bled out in the bathtub. Now the conflicting story says that Annalisa and her husband did indeed come into that hotel room. Not that she was cheating on him, but quite the difference this time. <laughs> says that Annalisa and her husband came to the room 311 in the Reed House Hotel to live for quite some time. However, she eventually, short after the residency, caught her husband cheating with another woman. He eventually left her alone at the hotel so he could chase after women. So she eventually decided to just stay and she died of a broken heart in that hotel. Not decapitated, just devastated. Now, regardless of which version is true, she ain't here no more. Annalisa was either murdered or murdered from a broken heart in room 311 and her spirit did not rest. But she died in that room and her ghost is still visiting people all the time. She has a strong disdain for men, probably because she was murdered by someone that she knew or a man that quote unquote loved her and she was murdered there. So she has a disdain for men and she really, really hates men that smoke. Those are the ones that she agitates the most when they're in her room. So the guests in this room say that they always feel like they're never alone and they're always feeling watched. These are some of the biggest complaints that they received down at the desk in the middle of the hotel lobby. They said they hear loud noises and there's running water from the faucets, flickering lights, unexplained noises, moving shadows, and a plethora of other strange activity that go on there. However, despite all of the horrible things that have happened at this hotel, including the murder of Anna Lisa Netherly, the hotel still remained open. And since then, many famous people have stayed in this hotel, regardless of its shaky past. Legend has it that notorious mobster Al Capone was actually staying in that room as well. He stayed in the same room while he was waiting on trial. He was on his way to Chicago for trial for tax evasion. On their way to Chicago, they decided to stop in Chattanooga at that ring house hotel for a while before heading up there. Now, there were actually security bars placed on the windows of that hotel so that Al Capone can escape from the feds. They want to keep him in. However, he's never made reports that Annalisa was bothering him while he was in the room. Others say that she was agitated by his cigar smoke. And she did make her presence known. But people say that Al Capone actually didn't have a problem with anything. He had a good stay. Then they say around 2004, the security bars were removed after yet another renovation. That changed again later on too. So among the paranormal activity, the hotel desperately tried to maintain its prestigious and regal facade to allure in people of affluence. So since then, people, powerful people, well-known people, people with connections have continuously stayed at the Reed House Hotel since then. They've had people such as Oprah Winfrey, Tulu Bankhouse, Tulua Bankhead, Charles Langston, uh, Gary Cooper, Winston Churchill, Ronald Reagan of all people. They even had Andrew Jackson and a, a gang of more politicians, celebrities, professionals. I'm talking doctors, judges, lawyers. Keep this in mind. Present day. You have to personally request to stay in room 331 and it must be booked ahead of time. Now they're charging a premium fee for people to stay in this room right now. Now this is the thing. They're saying because of its luxury and status is why they're charging a fee. So it's basically a cash cow for them. And in 2019, they started offering tours of this hotel room. Also that same year of 2019 in October, they actually opened it up for five full nights so guests could get the quote-unquote full experience of staying in that room with Annalisa's spirit. They call it the Reed House Haunted Room 311 Experience. Out of all things. And that package includes, and I quote, exclusive overnight accommodations in room 311, complimentary valet parking, 
and in room the counter of bathtub gin, two three eleven cocktails at the bar and billiards room, one hundred dollar dining credit at the hotel's Bridgman's Chop House restaurant and in room breakfast service. The Reed House Haunted Room three eleven experience starts at six 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 for double occupancy. You see that? You see how demonic these fools are? So it starts at $666 even for you to book for double occupancy. You're not going to tell me that these fools are not out here doing Masonic rituals out here in three room in room 311. You're not going to tell me they're not out here being demonic and wicked. Really? Who does that? So y'all out here probably tormenting that woman's spirit. Like this is present day, y'all. They're still doing this in 2020. Just playing around. It's all fun and games until somebody else dies, right? And then y'all gonna blame it on, they'll probably say the person was drugged or high on Molly or something. Who knows? But anyway. So they also claimed that during the renovations that they made all the efforts in the world to make Annalisa comfortable. So they tried to keep the room in vintage style, 1920s. They said they left the old phone and everything in the same place that it has been. They wanted her to be comfortable. And they also wanted the room to still have an old school vintage feel. In an article posted on 9 10 2019 in the Chattanooga, it stated that those security bars that were once taken off to keep Al Capone in that were removed in 2004 have been put back in place so people who are staying in that room going forward can get the full experience of what it was like to be there back when everybody else was there and horrible stuff was happening. But they add that part. Now, there are some articles that say the actual bathroom where Annalisa was beheaded, murdered, and killed and bled out in that bathtub had been sealed off in between rooms. So they're trying to say they shortened room 311 and sealed off the part of the bathroom where she was killed. There are either other stories saying that it actually took place in room 313 and not 311, but then a recent report from one of the desk clerks that were interviewed confirmed that it was in fact room 311. But you just can't get it to where she died anymore because it's quote unquote sealed off for public access. So now people are saying that room 311 has been modified, shrunk in size, sealed off where all the horrible things were happening. And it's used more so or less like a prop room now. Where you can just go in and get spooked out and it's vintage and it's 1920s. It's very great gasp -esque. and you can have fun and games. But their whole thing for doing this is to make money. That people are drawn to this room. They're drawn to death for some reason. And they're drawn to the money and the fools that want to go and want to get spooked out. Regardless of all the reports that are still on the internet to this day about their horrible experiences. Not just in room 311, but in other portions of this hotel. Everybody's seeing these weird ghost, uh, these ghost soldiers walking around. People saying they, they feel and see a woman in room 311. It's a joke to them. It's all about the money. You know, regardless of all the inconsistencies in the stories, the fact remains that it was a makeshift hotel. Union soldiers died there. That's a fact. Annalisa was killed there. That is also a fact. Some say she just died of a broken heart. But why do we have so many stories about her being beheaded and why was the room sealed off partially if she died of a broken heart? It doesn't matter. She's not around no more to tell the tale. Well, she might be, but the people might be too frightened to tell us what she told them when she was chasing them out that damn room. All right. I don't know if y'all can hear me. See if I can zoom in. What does that say? The Reed House. It's noisy as hell. Some strange ass white boy just tried to holler at me. I'm gonna make him if he tries something, but I am here on location. Reed House Hotel. Get that for y'all. See how large that is? All the trees. Where we are right now? This is Broad Street. I'm telling you, after doing all that research I've been doing, you are better off spending the night at the Waffle House than trying to sleep at this hotel. And I think people are crazy because if you are more intuitive, if you are more spiritual, then you are more likely to see these spirits and feel these spirits. Some people who are very, you know, lackadaisical, they don't care. They don't, so what? Somebody walk by, it doesn't bother them or they're just too blind to see it. But when you are, in fact, more spiritually in tune, you can feel when somebody moves your hair on your neck. 
you can see somebody go across the mirror and they got pictures. They have a ton of pictures. I'm going to be putting them throughout the video for you to see. They have paranormal. It's my buns. My buns are straight. I have a lot of hair, y'all. So getting these buns for y'all was a was it was a journey, honey. It was a task. I got a lot of rubber bands up here. Anyway, they do have footage of paranormal activity. They do have pictures of shadows of people who aren't in the room, but are in the room if you catch my drift. So again, I would rather spend the night at the IHOP or the Waffle House than to sleep in that hotel. You won't catch me dead there, but ooh, you gonna catch some other people dead there. Might be a soldier or two. I need a soldier. Anyway. In episode one, I already warned you all about the Civil War here. I already told you about all of the devastation that happened to Native Americans and African Americans here in the Confederate racist South. I have to say, all of this research I've been doing for the last three weeks on this hotel, I think that ground was cursed before they even started building, before the, the Crutchfield father and his, his two sons came, before Thomas Reed and his family came. Everybody tries to make it a family business and it fails. That's the telltale sign that maybe you all should just leave it alone. But they won't leave it alone because it's 2020. It's still open and it's still thriving. What's going on in there right now? I don't know. I'm not going in there. I'm going to go back to what I do best and finish my purge night and get to this candy bar that I had to try to fight that old man for. So thank you all so much for tuning in. This was episode two. The Reed House Hotel Hauntings. Now you know, and I encourage all of you all to go on there and research yourself. You might want to see what haunted cities you grew up in too, just to be on the safe side. In case you want to think, bring your kids back to, to show them where you grew up at, you'll think twice. So, again, thank you for watching. I am Shanae. Please go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to see you in the next video. You are not ready for episode three. I have to do this research in the daytime because it's getting real, real, real crazy. You're not getting no sleep in October. You are not ready for episode three. You're not ready for the costume. You're not ready for the horror stories. You are not ready. But I hope you get ready. Until then, I'm going to see you later. Protect your energy and protect your spirit too because, honey, they're killing everybody out here. see you all in next year's purge <laughs> happy election year see you all at the polls <laughs>